Hello and welcome to the step-by-step -step demonstration on how to simulate a rectangular waveguide using ANSYS HFSS. In the top half of your screen you'll see instructions and in the bottom half you'll see me using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop 2017.2 interface to simulate the rectangular waveguide shown. To do so, we'll define the geometry of this waveguide from scratch, define excitations, namely these two wave ports at either end of the waveguide, add a solution setup and frequency sweep, validate and simulate the waveguide, and then view some results. The three types of results we'll be concentrating on are electric field overlays, for example, the magnitude of the electric field or electric field vectors, rectangular plots, such as the S-parameter plot shown, and lastly, some solution data. The rectangular waveguide that we'll be simulating is a WR90 waveguide with dimensions as shown above. The cutoff frequencies have also been calculated and I'd like you to view this at your own pace. Now let's get started. I've already opened ANSYS Electronics Desktop 2017.2 and renamed this and saved it as Rectangular Waveguide. Now I'm going to go to Project, Insert HFSS Design. First we're going to check the solution type, so go HFSS, Solution Type, and note that we will use a driven modal solution as we intend to look at different modes propagating through the waveguide. Let's start defining the geometry. You could go to draw a box or simply use the box tool here. Click three times in the main area. Use this properties window to define a corner of the waveguide as position and then the X and Y and Z dimensions. We'll be using parameters A and B to define this length. A will be a length as 22.86 millimeters. B will similarly be a length of only 10.16 millimeters. And now we can use these variables throughout. Similarly, the length of the waveguide along the Z axis will be L as 60 millimeters, which we're prompted to enter here. Click apply and OK. On your keyboard, you can hold control and then D to zoom out and view the waveguide as shown here. Now let's give this wall a thickness to be more realistic of, for the waveguide. To do so, I'm just going to reuse this box. We're going to use it many times. So we can go Control-C, Control-V to copy it and automatically create box 2. Click on box 2 to, to bring up this attribute tab. Rename it as metal and give it the material copper search for copper, click enter, hit apply. You'll now see this metal box under the material copper. Now let's change its dimensions by getting to the command tab by double clicking on create box. And here let's give this box, give this waveguide a thickness, which we'll denote by th. We're prompted to enter what the value of th should be. Again, th will be a length of 0.2 millimeters. Now let's give this thickness to the x and y dimensions. Hit apply and OK. And you should notice that now we have a thickness for our waveguide. Now we currently have a solid waveguide rather than a hollow waveguide. So we're going to perform a Boolean subtraction. First click on metal, then holding control on your keyboard, select box one. Now you could go to modeler, Boolean, subtract or simply use this tool here and click on subtract. In this window, if you clicked it the other way around, you can move these across using those functions shown. Ensure your window looks like this and then click OK. You should now have a hollow waveguide. Now for defining ports at either end of the waveguide, we want to be able to select a face here, but currently we can't do that. So we're going to create a third box, which will represent the inside of the, of the waveguide as air. To do so, I'm going to find this box Instead of creating another one from scratch, hit copy and paste. We get box 2 here. And with this box, let's change its properties. Let's call it air. Give it the material air. You could use vacuum inside the waveguide as well. Hit apply and OK. You can see by clicking on create box here that we have the dimensions that we require for this box. Now let's define the outside of the waveguide as air up to a radiation boundary as well. To do so, I'm just going to reuse this air box, hitting copy and paste. Then with air one, let's rename it as radiation. Hit OK. 
Now we should make this all transparent. That would look a lot better. So click on air. I'm just going to make this completely transparent. Similarly, I'm going to click on radiation and make this transparent as well. Now with this radiation box, which we come currently can't see as a separate box, we want to give a five millimeter padding in both a positive and negative direction of both the X and Y axis. You can see this radiation boundary shown. Now it's actually defined this as a radiation boundary rather than just a box by clicking on it and going right click, assign boundary, radiation, and hit OK. Now we have this radiation boundary, which we can see in the project manager window as a boundary shown there. We don't always want to see this radiation boundary, so to hide it, we can select the object and then hide selected objects in active view. And now we no longer see that radiation boundary, even though it's still present. Now, we get, now we're ready to define wave ports at either end of the waveguide. In the main window, if you press F, you'll enter face selection mode. You could also go to edit, select, and go faces. Select a face at one end of the waveguide, right click, assign excitation, wave port. Here, under integration line, we're going to define an integration line, so we click new line. In the main window, we need to select the center point those two points as shown. Click next, we do not want to renormalize to 50 ohms, hit finish. In the project manager window under excitations, you should see that we have this port defined. We could simulate for only one mode, the TE10 mode, but we're going to simulate for more than one mode, so we can change that to four. Don't need to redefine any lines, click OK. Now let's perform similar steps at the other side of the waveguide. Again, select the face, right click, Sign excitation, wave port, new line. We need to pick the right points. You'll see this triangle pop up when we hit the right point. Zoom in just to make sure we're at the inner wall. Hit OK, it should come up as defined. Click next and then finish. Now we should have our two ports as shown. Just going to zoom out. Let's ensure that the second port can also handle four modes. Click OK. You can view these helpful hints to help you define these wave ports. I'd like you to view them at your own pace. Now let's add a solution setup. So we right click on analysis and go add solution setup. You should see a window like this. Let's change the frequency to 10 gigahertz. Change the maximum number of passes to 12 so the meshing will be appropriate. We're just going to go with the default settings. Feel free to view other solution setup settings here. Now, to this solution setup, let's add a frequency sweep. So right click and go add frequency sweep. Here, let's make this a discrete sweep. Which means we'll simulate at each of the frequencies we define here. We also want to save fields for all frequencies. So we'll check that box. Let's call, let's make this a linear step starting from 5 gigahertz up to say 17 gigahertz. And here we can define the step size. 0.02 gigahertz would be fine, but I'm going to make this a coarse simulation just to make it quicker here. We can also add other points. So say I click add below and I change this to linear count where we define the number of points that we're defining. If we just make that one, we can define just one frequency, for example, 6.56 gigahertz, which corresponds to the cutoff frequency for one of the modes that you'll see previously. I won't do the others, but feel free to copy the instructions as shown. Hit OK. Now we're ready to simulate the waveguide. We'll perform a validation check. You should see no errors come up. If you do, feel free to go back to previous steps. Now click Analyze All. In the bottom right corner, you should see progress for your simulation. And once your simulation is complete, you'll be ready to view some results. Now that my simulation is complete, I'm ready to perform some post-processing. I'll go through this quite quickly just to show you the, some of the types of results that you can display. The first is a port field display, which can show you the electric field vectors at the ports that you've defined. For example, if we go to mode one, you can see that this is consistent with the TE10 mode with the maximum magnitude in the center and minimum on the sides, tracing one half sine wave variation, as shown. This is consistent 
with the TE20 mode with the magnitude of EY component shown, tracing two half sine wave variations. Mode 3, consistent with TE01, and I'd like you to view the others in your own time. The next type of results that we're going to look at is not just at the ports, but along the length of the waveguide, and we're going to show the magnitude of the electric field vectors at various points. To do so, click on Air, right click, Plot Fields, E, and Mag E. Here you can set this up, so you can choose a frequency. For example, if I went for a very high frequency, like 17 gigahertz, and if I get rid of the port field display, and I focus here, let's get rid of this metal object, as I say that you should probably do to specify the view on this slide. So let's do A. First, select the object, so enter object selection mode by pressing O. Select the metal object and hide it from your current view. So you should now see it looks as shown, which looks a little bit better, so you can view the electric field along the length. This looks a little bit coarse, however, so to change some of the attributes of the plot, you can double click on the legend and you have a lot of options here. For example, in the scale tab, I can change the number of divisions to 80, hit apply, it looks a bit smoother there. We can use limits so we get a little bit more of the red that we desire. So say we reduce the maximum to around 2.3 and hit apply, 2300, you get a lot more red, which looks a little bit closer to these plots. Feel free to change to the other modes, which I'll show you how to do soon, and get these plots yourself. I'm going to hit close. To get other modes, rather than just the TE10 mode as shown here, we have to excite, choose a different excitation from the wave port. To do so, go to HFSS, Fields, Edit Sources, and here you can see which port and which mode is being excited. So currently we have the first mode from the first port. Say we wanted to view the second mode, we could change it as shown. So the second mode excited from the first port, hit Apply, and you will see the plot has changed as shown. You can change the limits, etc. yourself. Instead of just the magnitude of the electric field, we can see the vectors, electric field vectors, along the length of the waveguide as well. Before I show you that, I'd like to show you how to access the overlay in field overlays. So if I right click on it, I can toggle the visibility of the plot. I can also animate this field. If I click animate and OK, you can see an animation, which you can speed up as well, to show the electric field magnitude for different phases. I'm going to close that. Now let's get another overlay. So we right click on air, plot fields, E, but this time we select vector E. Similar story, we can pick frequencies. I'm going to hit done. Since I picked 10 gigahertz, which is below the cutoff frequency for the second mode, we don't see a very strong number of fields here. Let's bring back the metal object, hit show, and with this metal object, let's make it transparent. So you can see that because we've picked a simulation frequency of 10 gigahertz below the cutoff frequency, we don't get very significant propagation. If I go to fields, edit sources to get the first mode again, hit apply. You can see now we get electric field vectors propagating along the length of the waveguide. Now these vectors originate from inside the waveguide, they shouldn't be extending above the waveguide, but we can edit that here by going to marker arrow and changing the size of these vectors or removing the arrow tail, for example, so that these vectors don't extend far away from where they originate. You can also animate this plot by going to vector E, right click, animate, hit OK, and you'll see the animation as shown. If you pick a point, you'll see that the electric field vectors follow this sort of pattern as shown. Next, let's get some rectangular plots. To do so, it's very simple. Hit results, right click, create modal solution data report, rectangular plot. Here, you can choose the type of parameters you want to view. For example, if I wanted to get the propagation constant for the first four modes, just the imaginary component, so just getting beta, the phase constant, and click new report, you can see a plot like this one come up, which is similar to what I show on the very next slide. 
here where we see the cutoff frequencies and we see beta for all of those frequencies for different modes. Similarly, we could click results, right click, create modal solution data report, rectangular plot. We could get voltage standing wave ratio or S parameters. For example, if I wanted to get S12 for the first mode, I could get S12 for the second mode. S12 for the third mode and S12 for the fourth mode and click new report. You can see this plot which is similar to the one shown above. In this plot I'm just going to show some of the features. You can add markers for example add X marker. If you drag this across you get values for all of your plots at whichever frequency you choose. You can add a specific marker at a point. If you just click there you'll see it comes up as a marker. You can do that for the other points and you can also go add note and add some text. For example, if I was to say TE10 cutoff frequency and add this to the plot, I could move this where I wanted as well. The very last thing I'd like to show you quickly is that you can access the solution data directly to answer the question, how do we tell if a mode really propagates? Right click on results, go to solution data you should see a window like this one pop up. If I go to matrix data, rather than viewing the convergence or mesh statistics, and I picked a certain frequency, for example, 16 gigahertz, I chose to see the propagation constant, both the real and imaginary component for different modes for that frequency. Here, you can see that the alpha constant is almost zero for the first three modes which shows that we have that these modes will propagate with very little damping. However, for the fourth mode, we have a very high alpha of 44.7 nepo per meter, which indicates that this mode will not propagate very well at this frequency, which is consistent with the theory that we, would, that we introduced at the start of this tutorial. Hope you had fun with this presentation, and thank you for watching.